All right, this right here is Panorama issue 112. I showed this to you before the show so you can speak on it. Um, why don't we describe first a little bit about changes that foreign countries chose to make on particular Americana, specifically in comic books? Yeah, so you're showing me this Panorama number 112. It, say, it says it came out in 1967, and it's Yugoslavian, and we got Captain America on here. I mean, this is some type of, I'm sure, 60s propaganda in that area where you have America's symbol of freedom for this character, but they're using it with a much different color scheme. And I don't know why they changed it up as much as they did, but it's interesting to see Cap in this perspective because you have him and his, like, he's, like, bare-legged, okay, and he's got, like, these bicycle-slash-booty shorts on that are just weird to see him in. And this whole color scheme is strange. But, like, the Yugoslavian flag, I know it's got that red star, which is pretty prominent. But the black and yellow shield is, is different. And I don't quite understand the influence. I know, like, the Imperial Russian flag in the late 1800s was, had black and yellow in it. So maybe that's part of it. But this is a strange cap. Correct. You know, this is actually a Kirby cap that has been altered from Avengers issue number 10. This is actually a pinup that's in the American version that was chosen to be the cover of this oversized newsprint. And this is an example of something that I would, you know, put more along the side of like propaganda almost. You know, this is an American figure that has been altered to the point where, you know, you have parts of their flag that has been incorporated into the design. Specifically notice that the star placement is actually much sharper. It's more precise, similar to the Yugoslavian flag. And there is um, certain flags that have a banner around that star that is yellow. So it, it actually makes sense why you would see a yellow incorporated into this particular cap. Um, first off, how would you describe this newsprint? I mean, the page quality is really nice. It's still white. Um, it's really just good quality paper. It's interesting that this particular issue was able to last this long because I would assume most being oversized would have a lot of, you know, potential for wear. And, you know, this isn't even a full comic book. This is kind of a collection of different Marvel titles. And there's actually two pages on the inside that are from Avengers issue number 10. So, yeah, we have three different pieces of Avengers 10 in this Yugoslavian foreign comic book. Um, let's tell the community about the first page. So these are the two pages I'm, I'm sure you're talking about. Right. One is Iron Man battling Merlin, and that's just one page of the story. And there's like a second story here where it's Thor versus Hercules. So I'm not sure why there's just two stories in it, or two pages even, and not full stories, but um, the rest of it's just black and white, other comic strips in here as well. Take a look at this Avengers 10 that we have here, and let's compare the two. You can actually see the differences in color choices, and you can nail down what pages they actually are in reference to. I'm just going to count the pages really quick. <laughs> do it. <laughs> I can't do it that Where's your way. gloves? It's impossible. <laughs> it's so hard. I don't know how he does it. All right. I flipped right to it, right in the centerfold. So right in the centerfold is the Merlin Iron Man, and when you go to... The next page after the centerfold is the Thor and Hercules. So I wonder why they chose it. I mean, it's right off the centerfold. Yeah, there's so, an ad in between them. Yeah, so I wonder if it's there wasn't much thought behind it or purpose, but here's the pinup we want. Let's pick these two pages. Yeah, they must have just purchased it. Hey, just give us two pages. Compare the two, though. Let's take a look at the color work there. Everything seems to be accurate. I think just because it's printed on a different type of paper, the colors pop a little better. Um, but they changed the Captain America colors, but I'm not seeing any change in the interior characters. Isn't that interesting? Of all three pages, the only one they chose to alter. Last thing we have to do is take a quick look at that pinup in that Avengers issue number 10. Okay. Let's compare the caps. So and I want see. you to tell me which one you like better. I don't know if it's only because I grew up with them or not, but I just think this is better in so many <laughs> manners yeah i think it's just the bare legs that are the issue and the color scheme doesn't work for me i mean you got like i don't even know what's going on with the color of the gloves and the and the boots let alone the naked leg and arms i mean i don't know what's happening there but this is just 
Oh, it's so good. It's so good. Kirby did it right. Okay, so the next book that we need to chat about here while I give that to you to be careful with that tape right there. The Thank next you. book that we got to chat about here is Some Strank Goodness. Okay, so, oh, dude, it's been a long time, man. I've been hunting for it for a long time. But this copy of The Hulk, annual, number one. Can you explain to the community why this book that was available in Denmark, it's a Danish comic book, Printed in Finland. A lot of these foreign issues were printed in Finland. But this Danish version of Hulk Annual Number 1, why this is so special to me. I know exactly why this is so special. Outside of the fact you've been looking for it for so long, is that this has Jim Steranko's original face to the Hulk. Because the Hulk Annual 1 that we all know has been altered with Maurice Severin's face. So this is what it should have looked like originally before it was done over again. Yeah, over at Marvel, after receiving Starenko's work, you know, his idea was, well, if the Hulk is holding his own title, he's going to be stressed out, like it's heavy. He's going to look ugly, like he's going to look real ugly. <laughs> and that's kind of what went into the vision of this cover. But then once it was given to Marvel, they had to give it to Marie Severin to kind of clean the face up, make him look more handsome. So Hulk Annual 1, one of my all-time favorite covers, is kind of a collaborative event that took place with that creation, but I want to have the original complete Starank cover. And now I have one. Yeah. It seems like somehow the regular edition got circulated before the change for the American version. So a lot of the foreign uh, copies will have the original face to it. Exactly. And this particular issue was just one that was to my liking because there were more rocks on it. They didn't change it too much, but it's fantastic. And if you comment on today's video, I want to know from the community which cover you like better. I've kind of seen a split here, but I want to say that more people like the Marie Severin face. I prefer the Steranko face. What do you prefer? I'm the, on the Marie Severin side for sure for me. All right. Well, if the community lets us know in the comment section, it's going to enter you to win a giveaway. We do a lot of giveaways. And today's giveaway is actually courtesy of the member of the community who hooked me up with this book, Klaus over in Greece. He actually sent me this. I bought this from him. He completed this need I had. You know, I've been hunting for this book for a long time and it's exciting. I'm going to have it signed and I'm going to get it graded. But he actually went one full step further and he sent me a second copy for the comic book community. He found a low grade copy that I'm going to be able to send out as Comic Karma. Comment down below. Let us know what you think about this and it'll enter you to win this foreign comic goodness. Thanks, Klaus. Really appreciate it, man. Thank you for having us give something back to the community that's on the foreign side. All right. You have a foreign comic book that you wanted to share. Yeah. I want to talk about foreign comic book. This is a Golden Age foreign comic book. And this is a Canadian version. So the cool thing about this comic book, this is actually Manhunt number 12. Okay. This book up to December of last year was assumed to not exist. Okay. So at some point, Manhunt number 11 came out in 1948 and then started again with issue 13 in 1952 or 3, I believe. This is dated 1948. It came out in Canada, issue number 12. And this copy, not this copy, but a copy sold, a 1.0 just sold for $7,200 in December of last year. Okay. So for a book that didn't allegedly exist... I have now seen three to four copies, and that's probably the highest grade. It's a CBCS, what is it, 5.5? Five, five. So I was really lucky to get that. I got that actually from a Canadian collector, and I just picked it up. I, I got, I think, a fantastic deal on it, so I was pretty excited about that. But the cool thing is that the artwork on the cover is done by Ogden Whitney, which is a, a, a great famous artist, and the interiors have L.B. Cole. And you can almost see an L.B. Cole influence in the colors on the front cover. Yeah, let's describe this cover. It's a 5.5 off-white to white pages, Manhunt number 12. It says the FBI, Scotland Yard, Northwest Mounted, Secret Service Manhunt, issue number 12, The Frightened People. The color work is very vibrant. We have vibrant yellows and reds and oranges, and someone who's in like a, a flame retardant suit and who almost looks like he's whipping this couple that are clearly together, his arm is wrapped around this damsel in distress. And 
I find this fascinating. In the last year, this comic book you're saying wasn't known to have existed. This issue of Manhunt number 12. It was only after a foreign comic was uncovered in Canada where collectors realized that hole in the numbers, in the sequence, was actually filled on a foreign market. It was found in a swap meet last year. Amazing. And for the first, so go think about that. Like, how long has the price guy been out? How many people have been collecting comics? And only now to realize that there's actually a number 12 issue to be found out. And then a couple more have come out in the marketplace since, still on the very low end. So historically, it's a, it's a really cool book. How many are truly out there? I think we'll find out. But the other thing that I read, I read somewhere that there might even be potential for Zeta art in here. But Whoa. again, I, it's it's sealed. I haven't opened it. I just got it. I think more will come out in time because sometimes you have to identify that artwork. Just because someone says that doesn't mean it's been a truly identified. So it's really a really, really special piece. All right, comic fam, we got to ask the guru to bring this piece back. If you slap that like button, he may consider opening it on camera if he does want to check for that for Zeta art. Because dude... There's L.B. Cole in there. That's crazy to me that there's L.B. Cole art that exists in comic books that was recently discovered. My mind's being blown. Yeah, I wouldn't mind opening up. I mean, it's 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 a solid book. I mean, 5-5 five, five all day easy. So I have no concern opening that up. You know, if you guys are really that interested in seeing the interior of it, you can check it out. Why not? All right. Last foreign book I want to show the community before we move on is this Avengers issue number 190. Five and 96, we have a combo. They did this in the foreign market. They would combine comic books sometimes. And in this case, I'm so glad they did because we have Avengers issue number 196 on the cover, first appearance of Taskmaster. But some argue, well, is it 195? Because he does appear on the last page in Cameo. Well, if you get this French version, well, you don't have to make that decision because both are inside. And what would you say is the biggest difference of this version versus the American 196? Oh, it's the blue background. Absolutely. Yeah. Describe that for our audio listeners. Yeah. So you have the the Taskmaster and his, you know, powerful pose that he's that we're all familiar with in his first appearance on 196. Um, but the cover his background is green. This one is an actually really nice blue. It's a really nice blue, isn't it? And I'm. I'm glad you uh, <laughs> described the blue as really nice. I really yeah. enjoy this cover. I like this version better than I like the green version. I do too, man. I was going to ask you that, and I didn't expect you to say that. Yeah, things really pop on this cover. So, again, that's what I love about the foreign books because you'll see variations, and you're like, that was way better that way. It's crazy. Sometimes you have a cap in his, like, basically boy shorts, underwear, you know, and you go, you know what? It's okay. It's kind of fun, but that's not my cap. But other times you see key covers and you go, damn, they ha they're onto something there. It just pops so much more with that blue. Yeah, this was great. Great, great design, good color choice. And um, did you see the latest Black Widow trailer? I did. It and that's why I wanted out. to show this to you. So stoked about Taskmaster throwing the shield, going up against Red Guardian. This dude is going to live up to the hype, and I was really, really concerned at first, but this most recent preview, this is what I needed. He looks like he's got that skeleton mask on a little bit. It, it's close enough. I'm in. 